Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing unsteady flow data editing, specifically adding observed data. So what I have on the screen here is my HECRAS model. I've got my file references up here, the geometric data editor open down below. And then what we're going to be doing is going to edit and then unsteady flow data. And then I'm going to click on this observed data tab up at the top. We have a few different tabs. This last one here is for observed data. Now, what I have already is a number of um, data already entered, which I have prepared. So at the end of the lesson, our data screen will look something like this. I intentionally left this the way it is so that I can also demonstrate how to delete unsteady flow data. To delete it, we obviously we would just go delete unsteady flow file, but we don't have a file even saved yet. So we need to save the file and then delete it before we can get a brand new uh, unsteady flow data dialog box. So as you can see here, I do not have an unsteady flow file. So let's go ahead and save the file, delete it, and then get started with the lesson. So we'll go up to the edit menu, unsteady flow data, and go file, save unsteady flow data. I'll just call this lesson 25 and then click OK. So that's been added right down here, lesson 25. Here's the file. All right, let's go ahead and delete that now. So I'll go up to file, delete unsteady flow, select that one file and then click OK. And then there's the delete confirmation and yes. So let's go ahead and get started now. We're talking about observed data within an unsteady flow. So if I click on the observed data tab, we now have no data in here. When observed data is entered, it will also appear in the same plots and computed model results as we see, such as flow and stage hydrograph results and cross-section and profile plots. So this is a way for us to compare the model results with what we're entering here, observed data. As you see from this interface, we have a number of different options, observed stages, observed flows, observed rating curves, and high water mark data. And then so for each of these tables, we have an edit button and a plot button. And uh, these are just empty tables right now, but we will have new rows in this table for different uh, river cross sections. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and add a river cross section. We have a cross section at uh, river station zero, 1000 and 2000 for this uh, basic project I set up. So let's go ahead and click uh, select river stations. So we'll select the river. We'll select the reach and then we'll select the river station. So I've got three river stations to select. I'll select 2000 and then just click this add selected location to the table. So if I close that, now I have one river station location selected. So what I can do now is click the edit button for any one of these tables, such as observed flows. I'll click that. And then now in this drop down, I have that one cross section. So you really only want to add cross sections for locations that you have observed flows for. Otherwise, this drop down could uh, just get way too many cross sections in it. But since I only have three cross sections here, I'm going to just add all three. So I'll close that back to select river stations. We already have this one selected. We'll select 1000, add it, and then uh, the cross section at river station zero and add that as well. As you can see, there's also a delete. So we can delete them right here add them back. And then this DS distance column right here is a way for the modeler to specify the distance downstream of the actual cross section that that observed data was taken. So for instance, if you don't enter anything or you enter a zero, it's probably assumed that the observed data was taken at that river cross station. But if it happens to be maybe 100 feet downstream, then just type in 100. So I'll just type in 100 for all three of these just to give it some data there. So I'm going to click OK. Next, what I'm going to do is add some observed flows. I can do the same thing for stages, but I'm going to pretend that the data I have is flows. I'm going to open up DSS view and then um, I've got some data prepared here. So for instance, this is flow on an hourly time scale. And if we open up the table, here's the data. If I open up the plot, there's a visual of that data. That's not too important. I just kind of wanted to demonstrate that there really is data in this DSS path. So let's go ahead and navigate to this file. To make that assignment, we'll say that was River Station 2000. I'm going to go ahead and click the Edit button here. And then it opens up a new dialog box for me to enter either detailed data for one cross section at a time 
or table data where I can see sort of an overview of all the selected cross sections. Now, right now I don't have any data. So when I extend that out to the right, it goes out quite a ways when I click on this table tab. But let's go back to the detail tab now, and then I'll make it skinnier again. Okay, there we go. Um, and then I'm going to select my options here are, of course, the specific river station, the cross section we will stick with 2000. And then for the source, I have three different options. I can select DSS or table or constant. So let's do DSS first and then check out the others. When I select DSS, now below that, I select the file name and the path. So I will click on the file explore button. This is the DSS file. So you navigate to the DSS file. And then what we have is the selected file at the top and then all the paths down here at the bottom. We can use the filters if we want to help navigate and find our specific uh, time series data set. And this was, uh, I believe, 2005. So it was this one right here. And then I'll click OK. All right. So that's all we have to do there. We can also click on the plot button to see what that data looks like. So this is the same data that we saw over in DSS view. So we'll go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and add some data for the 1000 uh, river station cross section. And in this case, let's change it to table. So if we select table, now it's up to us as the user to enter the flow rates and uh, it looks like CFS here with a few other controls at the top. This first drop down here is to create the regular interval time series. So this is just entering the values for the flow rate. Okay, the other options are here to enter the date and time for all rows. So in this situation, we would also enter not only the flows, but also the date and time stamps. Uh, so that gives you a little bit more flexibility there, which you may want to use that. And then the third option is to enter the simulation time for all rows, in which case we'd still set the start of the simulation time, but we would um, just enter the number of, it uh, looks like, hours after the beginning that of the simulation, and of course the flows as well. So what I'm going to do is select the first option. That's a little bit um, easiest to work with, I think. And then after that, I'm going to select the start date time. So I could select the start of the simulation, or I could say it's a fixed start time, and then just type in the date time. I'll say it's January 1st, 2024, and I'll say it's at 0 hundred hours. So with the time interval of one hour as it's selected, we have hourly flows. And I'm just going to type in some numbers here. So for flow rate, I'll say it starts at 10,000. And then an hour later, the instantaneous flow is uh, 11,000. Okay, so I just entered some some data in right there. All right, so I'll click OK. I didn't enter nearly enough data, and uh, there's only 100 uh, rows showing up in this table anyway. But anyway, I'll just go ahead and click OK. Okay, so back to the unsteady flow data interface. If I resize this table, yeah, I've noticed that I have to kind of like resize the table before I can see the data. What we have in a summary table here is DSS. Um, for the River Station 1000, we have a for our table data. Okay, let's go ahead and do the last one, which is the constant value. The constant value is really only to represent the high watermark, which would really be down here. So we could just type in the high watermark if I select edit. But this is for stage, I believe. Let's see, edit. Yeah, it says high watermark. I believe it's for stage and feet. That's my guess. But I can also make that edit down here in observed flows. I'll click edit and then River Station 0. Oops, there it is. And then for the source, it'll be constant. So I'll just say it was a constant 5,000 CFS and then click OK. All right, so that, that's three different ways to define the observed flows for observed data. I could also have done observed stages. And really, the only difference there would be the values would have been elevation in feet instead of flow in CFS. And I think observed stage is probably a little bit more common. All right, below that, we have observed rating curves. So if I click edit here, we have the three different options for the three cross sections, as well as the source can either be DSS or table data. So if I select the table data, then I would just type in the stage and the flows. And then if I typed in DSS, I would be expected to enter the file name and the path of that rating curve. Let's go ahead and do that just as an example. I'm going to open up DSS view and this time I'm going to actually create a rating curve. Something real quick and simple though. So I'll go data entry. This is going to be paired data. So I'll type in um, river and then reach. Now this is going to be what flow versus stage. And then for part F, I'm just going to stay, say river station uh, zero. Okay, units for X is going to be in CFS and units for Y will be feet. And then I'm just going to type in some data here. I know that 
the invert is 30. So I'll say flow of zero CFS represents 30 feet at the stage. And then I'll say 1000 CFS is 33 feet. 2000 CFS is 35 feet. Okay, so I've got my date, my table data entered right here. Let's go ahead and save that and then just take a quick look at the plot. I need to scroll down to that record I just created, which is right here. Here's the data and then here is the plot. So very basic, nothing uh, too exciting there. Now, say for example, I wanted to just also quickly replicate this for the next cross section up at the River Station 1000. Um, let me make a copy first. So right click duplicate river station i'll just rename this to uh, 1000 for the part f and the path okay thank you and then i'm going to select that and just add two feet because that's how i've uh, set up my cross sections tools math functions i will add a link to my um, dss view playlist in the description of this video so that if you're curious and want to brush up on your dss view then this is definitely a um, cool tool to use. Very helpful. Okay, so math functions, I'm going to add only to the stage. I'll say two feet, compute, and then I have to save over that existing record. So we'll say yes instead of saving a new record. And then that should be good. So let me just go ahead and plot these real quick just to confirm. Yep, so it's just an offset by two feet. Now we can go back to HECRAS. And for observed rating curve, we'll go edit. Go, okay, my um, my heck res crashed, so that's a bummer. But anyway, I lost my observed flow data. We're looking at observed rating curve, and then we'll finish this up here. Click on edit, select the, oh, oops, okay, I got to add in the cross sections again. So cross sections, so add 2,000, add 1,000, and add zero. That's probably a good uh, reason to save your data as you're working on it. I did not save my unsteady flow data, so that's my bad. All right, so observed rating curve, I click on edit. And then we're going to select the cross section of zero first. And then we're going to select the DSS record. That's this one right here. And then for it already filtered paired data. So here's all the records. But if I, um, I only had two paired data sets in that DSS file. So here is River Station zero for part F. I'll say OK. And then for River Station uh, 1000, I'll open up the same DSS file. That's right there. And that is this one rating curve right here. So I'll click OK. I'll click OK, then I'll resize this window to sort of see both of them. OK, here are our two rating curves. Let's go ahead and plot those. And that looks good. We It's just this, basically the same rating curve, but it's offset by two feet. Also, if I click on this edit button and then come up to detail tab, that's what we've been working on. If I click this table tab up at the top and then let me just expand this over to the right a little bit, we have information about all of the cross sections in one single view, not just one at a time, which is the detailed tab. All right. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and save this, uh, save unsteady flood data as, and I'll call this lesson 25 and then click OK. OK, so that's in place. So if it crashes again, I'm safe. All right. Well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about unsteady flow data, specifically entering observed data, such as observed flows, observed stages, high watermarks, and rating curves in preparation to run an unsteady flow model in HECRAS.